when you want to learn ai or when you want to apply ai uh, don't start you know just like you know look at coding as the first first thing right mm-hmm. avoid it uh, try to understand what is there in the market how can you use it uh, and that will be a lot more helpful hello everybody and welcome to your favorite cx show the ngati cx show it's a new episode and i'm your host rahul and today we have a technology expert with us on the show as usual but somebody really special so before i introduce you to our guest allow me to introduce you to the magic of ngati ngati is the world's leading multilingual no code chatbot platform available across 14 channels the 35000 bots created across 186 countries in every domain and use case Ngati has also been recognized as a top platform by Inc.com, TechWorld, CIO, and many others. And we run the Ngati blog, the video channel, and the Ngati CX podcast that you guys absolutely love, receiving upwards of 400,000 visitors annually. And now for our amazing guest, we have none other than Pallav Modi on the show. Uh, Pallav has over 12 plus years experience of developing technology solutions for businesses across industries. His work is in the field of artificial intelligence. As an entrepreneur, has been globally acknowledged amongst the top innovations in the retail industry. He is really passionate about coaching organizations and startups to help them adopt and apply artificial intelligence. So, welcome to the show, Pallav. Such an honor to have you on board. Before we get the inside scoop from Pallav himself and diving into the show, I urge all of you viewers to please hit the subscribe button, the red button right there. Uh, this helps you to stay in touch with us because we've been dropping amazing content every single day. You have amazing thought leaders like Pallav coming on the show and shedding light. on things like artificial intelligence machine learning uh customer centricity cx all that cool stuff so you don't want to miss that so hit the subscribe button and jumping on to the first question that i have for you pallav is uh and and let's just start with the basics right so what are the first steps uh businesses need to take when adopting ai all right thanks rahul for a, for a wonderful introduction um and uh, to start off with the first question uh where it is like how do businesses start off uh, in ai i think the first step for any business to think whether they want to adopt artificial intelligence or not is to understand their problems right so first they need to identify that what kind of problems do they have for a company uh, who wants to improve their customer experience uh, and probably have uh you know have audiences from multiple zones speaking multiple languages right but considerably considering internet today right uh we have only one language that is prevalent that is english right uh but if they want to give an experience a localized experience to every person across the globe right giving multilingual services to their customer is that is a one good problem to solve which will improve their engagement and eventually they will improve their customer satisfaction scores that is where you know artificial intelligence plays an important role but when it comes to smaller problems where you may not need artificial intelligence but you may need simple solutions which are automation solutions uh uh you know uh, simple chatbot solutions without the use of natural language processing but then if you are want to service multilingual people right then a chatbot with the nlp services is what you should offer right so when it comes to for a business to adopt artificial intelligence they should define the problem right they should st- start with the why and the what right right uh after they have defined the why and the what that what why they want to do something and what they want to do something is then they look at the angle multiple dimensions of the problem and see whether it has to be solved with artificial intelligence or whether it has to be solved with a simple algorithm or can it be solved with a simple if and else statement mm. all right that is first second is once you realized yes uh, you know uh, we should apply artificial intelligence uh, the second step should not to just hire artificial intelligence uh, you know architects or maybe hire ml engineers or data scientists for that matter i think the second step is to use those non coding tools which i usually say for any 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 new entrant 
right who is trying to experiment a certain project or develop a certain uh, model to solve a certain problem is to first you know just get into those non coding tools like ngrt right and uh, there are so many other non coding tools right which can provide you great you know great at least results or uh, you know a great starting point right to see whether ai can solve your problem or not right right so there like there are multiple non coding tools like you know one we have ngrt second uh, you know there are tools provided by google um, amazon and others where you can use their apis or you can develop on their non coding services uh, and simply do the project in a very very small fashion right and if the project you know makes sense for you and and does really solve the problem right that is why that is when you scale the solution into a bigger solution and probably if a non coding tool is not able to serve you when you are scaling the product or when you are scaling the project or when you are scaling the solution that is when is a good time to get some kind of specialist maybe an ai engineer or an ml engineer or a data scientist to scale up scale the problem uh, sorry scale the solution right but to my understanding when you start with a small project one is that you're clear, you have clearly defined your problem and second is that once you clearly define a problem i can safely say 50 to 60% problems can be solved without getting into coding right with and and these are i would call them these are design problems right these are not coding problems and today artificial intelligence is can be pro is can be utilized as a service right uh, and and uh, and there are multiple ways you can uh, if if you're taking a computer vision problem then you can use computer vision apis provided by so many other players if you're trying to develop a chatbot and it's an nlp based problem then use those nlp chatbot development platforms right and get on with it once if you feel that yes you need to scale it beyond a certain level then you may need to hire a uh, some set of people and third and the foremost for any business to adopt artificial intelligence is you know the for the leadership to believe that ai is not a magic wand but it can certainly if 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 understood properly uh, right it can certainly you know it can certainly make the leaders differentiated from the followers right uh so so there has to be a step wise approach but i think the step one is to identify a problem second is reduce the scale of your problem to a level that you can use any non coding tools or non coding algorithms see the impact and then see whether you want to scale it up with a team or do you want to just continue using those kind of non coding tools in or using sim, simple low coding tools to start with right so this is for some business who wants to start uh using artificial intelligence uh in their day to day lives uh and you know the faster you start the faster the number of iterations and then the more the number of iterations you have uh the faster you get closer you get to adopting artificial intelligence uh, and reaping the maximum benefits out absolutely one of the most critical points that you have mentioned pallav is uh the first thing to do is to actually identify what your use case or what your problem is right because uh i think lately uh, even post the pandemic so many uh, conversations are happening around ai digital transformation that a lot of company companies are actually jumping on the bandwagon completely blindly right i mean like they don't know they just want to do it because others are doing it so it's very important to right. identify what you are trying to solve absolutely agree to that uh but well moving right. on to my right. second question that i have over here uh, and i know you have touched certain parts of this question in your first answer itself but uh, do you think a resistance in adopting ai exists because of you know a perceived skill gap and and if so then how can we combat this right i think uh, it, it's a very funny scenario rahul uh, that there was a uh, you know 
some time back i was reading a report from a cognizant right. that and it says that 80% of the executives are enthusiastic about uh, artificial intelligence one and secondly they all believe that artificial intelligence is very very critical for their company's success or for their success right. but if you see the adoption rate it is pretty low exactly right so there is if you see there is a gap between the enthusiasm and the adoption rate and this resistance is creating that adoption Right. problem right, right. Uh, the problem of adoption uh, and more than skill gap you know i think there is the fear of this unknown right mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. doesn't allow people to uh, approach ai with a open mind right right uh, i think skill gap yes there is it is it is considerably a new technology uh, you know uh, it is considerably you know perceived as a very complex uh technology requires a lot of coding mathematics and all that stuff but uh, if you see it from a very you know bird's eye view and if you go back take a step back and see it uh, from a broader perspective right it is for me it is not a skill gap problem it is the problem of uh, this fear not allowing people to accept ai in the manner that is one problem yeah. uh second problem is there's too much information there is information and overload of on artificial intelligence that people get uh you know people get uh, people just f- it becomes like a social media right for them right. Art of, like you know that robots are doing this or this is happening that is happening they don't see the real impact that how ai is impacting their lives even if i'll tell you one thing that even if they start understanding that how artificial intelligence is impacting their lives uh this skill gap will get reduced okay. right um second the biggest reason uh, for the skill gap is the fear of coding mm. uh or fear of mathematics right. right which which kind of takes a lot of people back and um, uh, and you know makes them feel that uh, you know we can't learn so fast we cannot learn this this is for the people from mits or this is probably for the people of phds and a lot of other that kind of feeling is there right uh which is again very wrong as i said previously there are now some amazing tools that are really, that are you know that are that have been developed by some amazing startups right uh, where you do not need to even write a single line of code right where it is your ability to apply that ai mindset the data driven mindset right that can help you solve that problem right um and the you know these are the two things which is resistance to this change which people want to uh, which people do not want to take up the one is the fear and second is this uh, you know fear of this unknown and the fear of uncoding which doesn't allow a lot of people to kind to you know take the first step right and and there is so much information information uh, you know which is killing the whole thing so i feel those are the couple of things which which is creating this resistance towards this change right, right. and uh, and and the last thing which i kind of missed was that the, that the not the younger generation but you know senior folks uh, they believe that one that artificial intelligence cannot be as smart as a human mm. right one and secondly they also believe that if artificial intelligence becomes as smart as a human then we all will be left for nothing <laughs> right sure. Uh, sure. and that is why a lot of people also want uh, talking about stuff like you know we should ban ai and you know all that stuff but if you see the other side of things uh, and, and see that ai is only augmenting what customers do sorry what we people we human beings do in a repetitive task and then we can we can we can become more creative and innovative using those basically it augments the human rather than you know it is against the human right. in some scenario it is going against the humans but i think over a period of time humans are far more too intelligent to control the machines as compared to other ones true true uh i think uh, these are some very critical points that you have mentioned and uh, the root cause of all this is probably a lot of misunderstanding and wrong knowledge out there uh, as you right. mentioned that on the internet it's like a vast ocean but it's similarly it's very easy to get lost in a vast ocean if you're not right. directed 
correctly i think uh, right education and obviously like you mentioned uh, there is a fear of mathematics uh, i mean i feared it myself too <laughs> but uh, you know fortunately uh, there are so many platforms we offer one in gati and there are multiple platforms out there that can actually bridge that gap if you want to kind of uh, take it forward right 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 absolutely absolutely uh, agree to that uh well uh, you know pallav it's uh, you know moving on to the next question i mean it's no secret that uh, you've been working for technology solution across industries like so uh, talking about one such hot topic and it's retail and e-commerce uh, and and, right. and 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 this has like shifted extremely since the like you know since the beginning of the year so how can really retail and e-commerce companies use ai to you know deliver excellent cx every single time right uh so when we for a, you know for a retailer and for an e-commerce customer is their most important stakeholder absolutely right uh, because they are there because of those customers right and they have a and and the beauty of a retailer on e-commerce is the volume they are handling right, right? in right. each and every time right okay so let's break it down very simply right to me when i go to amazon or flipkart right my expectation starting from point 1 is that the 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 you know as soon as i reach and as soon as i search for something i achieve that in the shortest period of time right so that is your recommendation bit of things set and personalization right so these are the two very very critical part as soon as you know someone enters your store whether it is e-commerce or whether it's an offline store right, right? whether it is an offline store just out of outside your apartments or just outside your house i think there are two very very critical thing personalization is key that when i enter i feel uh, you know a part of it that you know you, you make me feel special right second is i get to my product fast because nowadays uh, time is uh, uh, you know time is a uh, what you say is the most is the biggest convenience that mm-hmm. you can offer mm-hmm. right True. to a customer right uh, so these are the two things so ai does play a very very big role in both of these right uh, one is your personalization so if we talk about e-commerce now we have dynamic pages that are being rolled out uh, uh as per the customer time you know as per customer profile the browsing behavior and browsing history and a lot of other details mm. right so that is personalization second is recommendation uh so personalization and recommendation come together but recommendation is that you know uh that recommendation makes you reach makes the customer reach their destination as fast as possible that is one second it also you know makes the customer buy more right, right usually mm-hmm. right so today uh, when we talk about again uh, the leading e-commerce companies they 30% of their you know revenue comes from those recommendations mm. which either is a part of the listing uh, you know either a part of lists that are there or either part of products or the services they offer Right. Uh, right so even for even for an off uh, you know offline company it is very very important that along with the aisles of products right placing those recommendations uh, whether those recommendations are coming from the store person who is standing there you know maybe having a, uh, maybe having a tablet in their hand or having you know interactive advertisements being played in the uh you know there is a lot of thing where, where a lot of computer vision is being used uh right. to understand what the customer needs and developing an interactive making the the, the customer feel you know uh, that they are not alone in the store right. and there are interactive screens across the retailer mm-hmm. so that is one one is where is it, it's all about personalization and second is about recommendation then right. second is uh, uh you know when we talk about the quality of uh, products that retailers and e-commerce companies are providing you right so the quality of products uh, can be improved on the basis of the feedback that the customer gives so right. in a very very i'll tell you a very simple example that flipkart uses customer reviews 
right to right. make to identify new product features mm. for their own private label brands right right so they will go through they will use natural language processing right to look at the reviews of a certain product category identify which are the most critical uh, negative feedbacks and which are the most positive feedbacks and then mm-hmm. identify the features according to that product right. right right so that is also very interesting that how do you improve the product experience mm-hmm. for a retailer and for a e-commerce private labels are very very important um, as as a revenue stream mm-hmm. then you know third is that uh, you know analyzing the for a retailer right offline retailer it is very important to how 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 uh, you know customers are interacting inside the store right so wherein you know you can provide faster checkouts small queues so faster checkouts and smaller queues is what people love right you don't want to stand uh, you know after picking up an item you really don't want to stand very very long uh, inside the store right and and you know your membership membership should get uh you know members should should get renewed automatically mm. you you can pick, pick the products and leave the store and third is that you know again that personalization is very key so you know you are not offered the same discount every time maybe you are offered a different discount at different times for a different product probably the feeling is that you know these these people understand me better and offer me discounts on things which i buy the most right. although maybe the case must be around but how can you specially make the feel so there are multiple ways e-commerce and retailers are using uh, customer servicing solutions and of course uh, the last which goes unsaid is actually providing great customer service post purchase uh, because that is when you build strong relationship with your customer Correct. right uh, and customer service post purchase uh, either it is a service or it's a product uh, and you can offer that through email you can offer through that through chatbots you can offer that through uh, you know on call and there are many other ways in which you can automate a lot of customer services through natural language processing or through even through computer vision right uh, where where you do not need a person to actually solve all the queries right but maybe there can be a ratio of 50 to 50 50 percent ratio where 50 percent is automated and 50 percent is left right. to the uh, customer right absolutely uh, i love it how you have broken down the points uh, because uh, it's like a lot of pieces to it right and it's not just like one size fit all that you apply this and everything is solved i mean everything has its own and most importantly it has to be tailored to the customer i think that is the most important thing and especially yeah. with you know uh, amazing uh, uh, cx uh, that we've seen with companies like amazon lately you know the expectation yeah. the customer expectation has also risen that much so i okay. think it, it 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 makes sense to kind of you know go there uh, but you know pallav uh, you have been in this game for a while now and uh, you have seen the evolution of how things are you know uh, picking up even with technology and the way we do things so with your experience uh, what trends do we need to watch out for you know ai in the retail and e-commerce space okay so uh, in terms of a business shift and if i if like you know i'll just broaden the perspective of bringing in technology right. uh, because uh, and from business perspective i think technology will play a very critical role right in providing good experience i would not say so as you said right you now our customer experience is very elevated to a level of amazon right right and to match that level it is already very very difficult it is not easy at all right because i've run i've run a b2c firm i understand what is customer experience and customer experience is defined by the best in the segment right right so that is the biggest challenge mm-hmm. but when it comes to uh, uh, you know so if you can provide uh, you know as, as a retailer and as an e-commerce player you need to provide a minimum level of experience otherwise people will not buy from you okay. right if you, even if you're not amazon flipkart or among the top 5 the customer should feel that he has had he or she has had a smooth transaction right. with you 
starting yeah. from the point when that person receives an email of you running a promotion to eventually getting the promoted deal or product delivered to your home right right uh, and in this whole journey right the role of data uh, to make your un- to make you understand your customer understand their expectation their behavior and eventually their uh, you know loyalty with you is defined by a lot of data points in the whole customer life cycle right right, right. and when it comes you need to own every bit of it and need to understand that how can you maximize the share of technology uh, in each segment mm. right when you maximize share so you know if 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 i talk about because if if you talk about india right so the uh, you know 90 still i think 90% of the retail is still with kirana stores and small pop and sh- mm. uh, small pop up stores right mom right. and pop stores uh, and so for them all the segments starting from the communication to eventually the purchase and the post purchase is currently driven by a person right, right? and that is why they, they are not able to scale mm. right and they limit themselves to that 5 km radius or maybe 3 km radius right sure. Sure. And, and and the biggest shift that today it is happening is consolidation amongst consolidations so today uh, e-commerce is consolidated by flipkart and uh, amazon right. and if you talk talk about local local retail now it is being consolidated by grofer swiggy zomato and uh, uh, you know big basket and these guys are facing the biggest challenge of their lives right uh, but today they need to adopt technology and that is going to be a major shift right i want to today order through big basket or milk basket or grofers for the reason that it provides me such an easy uh, you know easy interface mm. uh, to get my stuff delivered and understand what i'm buying and not only that i can also figure out that how much of my money is going where True. right uh, mm. so that is one where uh, you know uh, the, the small kirana stores and the pop pop up stores need to understand that they need to increase the technology share in their customer experience cycle mm. and you know make the customer feel more connected that is one right. second is that is from the business perspective i'm saying from business perspective i see second is the biggest role of conversational ai right, right. Uh, from a technology perspective that is now unfolding right uh and conversational ai again i talk about is that now the generation is very very comfortable shopping even on whatsapp True. right whatsapp has become one of the biggest uh, you know and if i broaden the perspective whatsapp then i say again going to chatbots right mm-hmm. so conversational ai where chatbots have now uh, you know people are uh, people are shopping on chatbot mm-hmm. people are shopping on chat people are shopping on whatsapp right yeah. uh, so that is going to be one critical new interface right from web mobile to chat right right so people used to shop on web now mobile now people are right there and uh, you know people are also uh, uh, you know buying on uh, social media right like your instagram stores and everything but now people are comfortable buying on chat and there are companies mm. which there are startups which have built on chat True. okay true so now we need to understand that how conversational ai is now playing a very very big role in how people interact with your brand and buy with your brand right, right. and probably also connect with your brand right so you right. so you need to look at chat at, at a very very uh, it's just not a chatbot right for a lot of people it's just a chatbot chatbot you know what chatbot does chatbot is now playing a very very important role sitting at the center of customer experience for a lot of industries absolutely uh, and that is one thing second is when you talk about conversational ai and uh, which is again going to be the new next interface is the voice ai mm. right uh, and you know today with with the capability that google amazon and other many you know unifor is there right they are providing is uh, providing is that now customers can talk to you in any language mm. right and you can talk 
back to them in any language right right so what it brings is that today it brings a lot of people who do not understand your language also to connect with your brand mm. right i'll tell you a very very simple um, uh you know a very simple example that happened to me that i was running a program ai for managers right. uh and i had done some recorded recorded sessions right and there was a guy in uae right uh, mm-hmm. and there was a guy in uh, spain who had kind of converted the whole thing into spanish and was listening to it mm. right uh, and he t- told me that he converted using google translate or did, did something there and i was right. like dude is there a market in spain also <laughs> right yeah. and i surprised he said yes there is a very very big market in spain and he used those kind of tools these are all artificial intelligence tools which, right. which are able to convert my my voice to text and then can translate it and again go get it back from translation from text to voice to voice yeah right so voice ai gives the power to everyone i am not saying to only to a business but even to an individual to connect to the world mm. without feeling that he doesn't know english right because english today is the only you know is the most commonly used uh, language on uh, you know on internet but today uh, you know with the with the help of voice ai even a lot of un- un- uneducated people from rural areas can also reach out to you mm-hmm. so i think conversational ai uh, with voice ai and your chatbots are going to be of uh, the next biggest interface that is coming in yeah absolutely agree to that and uh, uh, you know uh, especially the points that you have mentioned uh it is it is amazing to see that ai is actually you know uh, making our lives more mobile now if you see from the retail store to the application to now whatsapp where in like almost half of the more than half the population is present right i mean that right. even breaks all the barriers of geography language and i think uh, it's exciting times coming in the future uh with technology like right. this i mean amazing uh, insights over there but you know pal mm-hmm. now the next question is one of the most critical one of the most important questions to be asked and you being an expert on this i think uh, you can help us better on this so uh, when we talk about shopping right so shopping is a very personal experience so right. uh, so at the same time how do we maintain a balance of using ai and you know digital transformation to deliver personalized experience but you know without really intruding a customer's privacy so how does that balance work out so that is a very interesting question right so uh, you know i think uh, a couple of weeks back uh, uh, my wife uh, suddenly said that she's got a she, she's got a shoe recommendation on instagram and right. she was thinking about buying a shoe and uh, it is very very you know she felt she felt that every everyone is uh, you know listening to me even our uh, you know phone is listening to them right. and you know right. yeah, so there is a growing uh, uh, you know growing concern of uh, for a lot of people that where they will start have started believing mm. uh, that you know if they are being listened they are being watched and they are being offered to buy something as soon as they do you know either you know think about it or talk to their friend and then they uh, you know in that in that case they are feeling threatened that you know now they are open right all the secrets right. are open to the world right uh somewhere true somewhere not true but how to strike a right balance uh you know from a, from a from a company perspective is that not to make you know we a company uh, who is leveraging artificial intelligence to provide personalized services to their customers uh, while shopping or on e-commerce is probably mapping each data point right of the customer journey and today they have so much data that they can actually identify that probably after at 6 o'clock pallav maybe wants to watch cricket and it would show me a cricket ad right, right. right now they need to for the companies see they have the data and probably this is not the data this is generic data this is not about exactly about palla modi right right but this is something where they say they profile you know this age to this age group this kind of a person mm-hmm. he should be doing this right now when i try to answer a question that for a company how should you balance it i think 
they need to uh, the the very difficult question for me mm-hmm. because you know i am i i love ai so i try to get the best out of uh, you know best from the data right, right? as much as possible you know as much as uh, you know I, i i i don't think from other side like you know my customers are getting feeling intruded mm. and the customers are getting but when i when you ask me this question i and i think a little harder that you know yes because uh if the customer starts feeling threatened by the brand right of course their engagement goes down right and their uh, their so see from a data science point of view i will not stop understanding getting deep into the data right to be mm-hmm. honest right from sure. an engineering point of view why would I not i i have the data and i would like to uh, and but this data is not very really personal data usually right this mm-hmm. is data as per your gdpr compliance right right uh, but if you think that so there are two aspects which is now being talked about one is humanizing ai mm-hmm. humanizing ai right uh, so that is critical that you need we need to understand that we 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 do not get into too much depth of data so that we can understand start understanding human behavior because that will become a little very very you know uh, that is something which is a gray area right uh, no one understands human behavior mm. but if machine starts seeing that we understand human behavior then that will be the day which will be very very you know uh, difficult for people to kind of uh, accept mm. uh, but how to balance it it's a very tricky question man Uh, i still have do not have a very clear answer how to balance so one of course is to on the communication side of things right how mm-hmm. do you communicate and how much do you know right, right. if right. my wife is feeling a little threatened right right then that is wrong true and the communication has gone wrong right right uh, communication in terms of showing her the shoe product understanding that she wants a shoe maybe should come in a very latent manner not in a very proactive manner so i think communication will be very key because i know a lot of information about the customer i know a lot of information about the customer behavior uh but i have to draw a fine line between personalization and customer loyalty mm. right and it's a it's an ongoing iterative process where uh, i will cross the line a couple of times but i should know when i've crossed the line mm. and take a step back. right absolutely i think uh, one of the things uh, that also is important is to be transparent about the data you have of the customer and and make it be very honest about the fact that okay this is something we know about you and making sure that the other person is okay to have those additional features of maybe recommendations and then kind of like you know have a cap on okay maybe i'm not wanting you to have this data about me and not show me recommendations and block that part of things mm-hmm. or maybe yeah, i am open to it you know just pop in the recommendation maybe that is one thing and again at the end of it all i mean we'll have to trust the goodwill of the companies also and you know and and i don't think a lot of companies use it for the negative but uh, it's it's very important to spread this message through conversations because uh, it's 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 uh, re- really fascinating to know that a lot of the people uh, out there even a, a couple of our listeners are actually blind to the fact that data can be used in a way like that you know and and right. it's very right. very important to have this communication and this conversation because this is the time and now especially right palav because post this technology is going to be in an all time high Uh, and uh, and these, these things are going to be coming through so it is very important for us to spread this message and you know uh, have the communication with the uh, audience as well and and spread the knowledge yeah. about this so yeah that was a very uh, and what i liked about your answer is to kind of you know uh, uh, you know that you mentioned that uh, uh, we 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 make it very uh, subtle, to put it in a subtle way Uh, and to not actually throw a placard in front of you that hey you know what we know this about you would you like to buy a shoe so it could it could right. like you know it it the companies can play smart by subtly putting out the message and then kind of like you know recommending things in right. the back of their head right. absolutely not on the face of things yeah yeah i True. think i think you know just putting it out makes them feel a little more uh, you know go away from the whole thing true true yeah it's it the the key lies in the subtlety of uh, you know uh, the message but obviously with the consent of the consumer as well i mean that will be a great thing too right. well right. 
yeah and and this has been a fantastic conversation pallav i mean so many insights were there so many fascinating stories and your experiences that you have shared before we close out are there any other thoughts that you'd like to leave our audience with right so so as a i would not say i'm a coach or a i'm like you know i'm kind of an evangelist there are a couple of things uh, i really would you know i stand for a couple of things and i would love to I talk okay. about me maybe just take 2 minutes of your time okay. like one is that uh, don't be scared of artificial intelligence just be prepared right mm-hmm. and 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 do not when you want to learn ai or when you want to apply ai uh, don't start you know just like you know look at coding as the first first thing right mm-hmm. avoid it uh, try to understand what is there in the market how can you use it uh and that would be a lot more helpful right. second is develop something called an ai mindset right and ai is not only for coders or mathematicians or you know data scientists ai is not about only about data science right ai is a lot about design mm. uh and 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 that is when when I, when i say develop an ai mindset is that how do you use your data in the right fashion in the right place to get the best result out of it right so i would just want to put it out that data is not about coding and you don't need to start coding right mm-hmm. uh, and eventually leave, leaving you with something with the favorite thing so usually i ask like you know what is the difference between uh, you know a uh, 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 ai and a human right or a robot and a human mm-hmm. right so the only thing is the only difference is that robots cannot dream and we right. can Right. right and they will never be able to dream so yeah. don't worry about the fact that ai will take over us or robots will take over us till the time we have the ability to dream uh, no one can take us over right so i'll end it with that absolutely well you ha- there you have it ladies and gentlemen pallav modi with a beautiful message out there uh, it's about embracing ai and having the ai mentality for driving you to success fear won't do the thing because like it or not ai is coming it's about how smart you are with uh, using the technology so thank you so much pallav for your amazing time and your insights have been fantastic and our audience are really going to enjoy this show right thank you thank you rahul appreciate that and before we close out all the to all the audiences as i said we have an amazing amazing webinar coming through it's about live chat solving customer queries li- real time it's with the amazing dennis wakabai she me and drishti will be there too it's an ingati webinar not the usual boring stuff a lot of fun jokes games so make sure you register for the same uh, all the details will be there in the description so make sure you check out all the links to pallav's socials will be also be available in the description so you can reach out to him if you need anything any help and i'm sure he'll be there uh, thank you so much and we'll be back with a new episode and a brand new expert soon so stay tuned and we'll see you around for the next one